The opposite of a correct statement is a false statement, but the opposite of a profound truth may very well be another profound truth. Niels Bohr. My name is John Rose, and I remember reading that quite a while ago. And since then, I've created a very special teaching tool that makes analyzing things like this a lot of fun. In fact, I love to revisit things I'd studied a long time ago with my new tool because I'm able to look at things a little bit differently. Now, long ago when I read that, I was reminded of uh, how some people had to see it to believe it and others have to believe it to see it. So uh, I'm thinking nowadays, is that really the opposite? Is it a correct statement to begin with? Well, if you just say you have to see it to believe it and you have to believe it to see it, then no, that's not correct. It's not explicit enough because not everybody has to see it to believe it. Some people have to see it to believe it. Some people uh, can believe it without seeing it. And then some people are never going to believe it, no matter what. Most people don't want to believe it. But then when you look at the opposite of that, some people can believe it. And that's what it takes for them to see it. In other words, you have to see it in your mind's eye first, for some of us, before we can actually believe it. And when we're seeing it in our mind's eye, we can do that without having to believe it. But that's how some people try to make this work. They'll say that you have to believe it to see it because you've got to think about it because thoughts are real. We create our own thoughts. And if we rely on only what we see, we're limited to the outside world. But when we use our imagination and our mind, we can see things in our mind's eye. We can see ourselves doing things before we do it to help us believe we can do it. But the key here is that, that believing it is only one way to see it in our mind's eye. In other words, we don't have to believe something to consider it. But usually only intelligent people can do that. And an intelligent person can look at two things and not believe either one of them or may already strongly believe in one thing, but will at least look at the other. Be like a Buddhist, where they'll be able to entertain more than one idea at the same time. Now, the way this relates to me is I, my special teaching tool uses two forms of two-value logic, and one of them are polar opposites. So I'm in a really good position to evaluate something in the plus A box of knowledge, if it's a profound truth, to look at the opposite of that and see if it's another profound truth, and it just doesn't work. A profound truth, cooking is the fall of mankind. The opposite of that, uh, cooking is what made our brains grow bigger, <laughs> what made us great. That's not true, so that doesn't apply. Almost everything I can think of, I can't imagine anything unless the words are kind of twisted like seeing is believing and believing is seeing. But then again, the key is we don't have to believe in something to try it. And that was one of my revelations because I realize that our performance equals our ableness times our willingness and that's our performance and I came up with 21 main problems of knowledge relative to our performance two forms of ignorance 12 sources of false knowledge and then seven wellness factors so here I have seven main willingness factors one of them is apathy there's seven main pieces there one piece has three sub pieces so there's actually ten pieces all together I explain all that in other videos but all we're going to look at right now is one of those willingness factors, and that's piece 18.1 to 18.4 and 54.5 to 55.7. And I've said in my other videos, of all of my piece numbers, the most important piece number in my schematic is piece number 54.5, and that's where we're willing to test an idea whose time has come. Now, before I had this revelation, I used to say we had to be willing to apply what we know. But I realize we don't have to believe in anything to apply it. We can test it. We can prove it. I'm going to test it to prove you're wrong. In fact, this, 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 that quote actually reminds me of another quote uh, or something that Max Planck pointed out when he was trying to reintroduce or introduce new uh, ideas, radically ideas in quantum physics. And he said it takes a whole generation of physicists to just get out of here before any new ideas can come into play. And... Uh, uh, and that's how it is with food. And, 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 what, and what made me 
And what made me think about all of this is, and this is what Max Planck says, it doesn't matter how well you explain things, and that's what I realized with, about food. It doesn't matter who I am, what I've done, and how well I can explain my story. I gotta go back to what they did to Pythagoras when he went to Egypt to learn the secret sciences. Just do it and then we'll talk about it. So that's really the only way that we'll get anybody to believe everything. So you have to see it to believe it. You have to believe it to see it. No, you gotta test it to believe it. Because when you can test an idea as time has come, then you can prove that this is true. Otherwise, what are you gonna be limited to? Your own experiences. And the so-called experts. Our experts are clueless, and we're being bombarded daily about how they're working so hard to find the cure for this and this and this. It's just around the corner. It's all poppycock. Most of our problems are self-inflicted. This is the thing we need to realize. And do you have to see it to believe it? You bet. You need a brand new reference. You got to test something you haven't, uh, an idea's time has come. You got to do something you haven't done before. And if you go the distance, the chances are almost every one of your problems are going to go away. And that's when you're going to realize that none of those systems out there that have been promising to solve our problems will ever be able to solve our problems. Because the solution lies within us. That's the reality we need to realize. And I've said this a thousand times. There's not a whole lot some of us can say to convince anybody. They've got to see it with their own eyes. They've got to have the experience themselves. They've got to be open enough to do something on a temporary basis so they can see what they're missing. Most people have no idea how great this is, but I want to thank all you guys right now that are on a solid food vacation. And you're all doing it together and you're supporting everybody and you're helping me answer questions. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for all the trim tabs out there that are playing y'all's role in helping keep this message alive and it's, it's an exciting journey I just wish people could understand how much fun it is to be on the hero's journey it is so exciting it's so rewarding to know that you're helping people and yes you're gonna have disappointments yes if if you're a type of person who wears their emotions on their sleeves they don't have a thick skin it's not easy when you try to help someone and and you get rejected or whatever. It's tough. And it's enough to make you want to stop it. Don't give up, my friends. That's part of the hero's journey. You got to bravely face those disappointments that you know are part of the journey. You got to put aside any personal discomfort this might cause on a short term basis. But I'm guarantee you, as soon as you get some bozo out there that's not ready, you're going to find someone else who is. And when you can find someone else who is, it's so exciting to help them to change their life, to transform their life, to realize that this is what life is all about. We're supposed to be helping one another in life, and we're doing a very bad job of it because we're not coming close to living the way we are. But that can change very quickly. We're getting closer and closer, my friends, to making things happen. So keep doing what you're doing. Realize that for most people, they're going to have to just come out and test it. So that's the probably the best thing any of you guys can do right now is try to figure out how to entice people just to test it just to, you know I don't know what it's going to take uh, everyone I guess is going to be a little bit different will be motivated differently if you know they're a high red personality a lot of physical energy they want to make a bunch of money tell them this is going to give them more energy if their minds gonna think better they can be able to make more money if they're high yellow people are gonna like you better <laughs> if you're blue it's gonna help you be more creative if you're a performer, an artist, you'll be more creative. You want security in your life. There's only one way to feel secure in life, and that is to know that you have your health. Nothing is more important than our health, my friends. Most of us don't know what we're missing. There's another level out there for us to experience. And for most of us, it's going to take a solid food vacation to wake us up. Now, if they're not ready to take that step, but they just want to add some more fruits to their diet, more salads, great way to get them going. And they'll notice a difference. The thing is, a lot of people never even do that and see the difference. And of course, we know if we just get them to stop eating the processed foods, they're going to see great results, which explains why so many diets do so well. I talk to people all the time that talk about how great their diet's working. 
because they're not eating this and not eating this and not eating this. Again, that's the whole idea behind a solid food vacation. Quit eating all those things we shouldn't eat. Keeping in mind, a lot of us aren't going to agree that all of those are mistakes. That's why there's only one way to make sense out of all of this. you got to take a solid food vacation. When you take a solid food vacation and everything starts making sense to you, you're in for a treat.